Hey everyone, it's Laura from Y Safeguarding, formerly the National Safeguarding Unit, and I'm joined by Phil today to talk about education and training, which is under the culture section of our National Safeguarding Guidance. Um, so Phil, can you tell us a bit about what education training is at the Y? Yeah, absolutely. So education and training at the Y is really around the level of um, training competencies we expect from our people when they're working with children and young people. Um, now, as a Y person, you'll receive lots of great training and lots of different things whilst you're here. You might get some OHMS training or work health and safety training, um, some first aid training. But if you work with children or even if you don't work with children, we make sure that everyone understands their responsibilities to keep children safe. So you'll absolutely get some training which teaches you around your roles and responsibilities in keeping children and young people safe um, at the Y. And that group will be through online methods, but also some face-to-face -face training as well. So you'll start to see some of that come available to you um, and that's available obviously to see what types of training is available is in the National Safe Guidance okay. as well. Yeah, and it does mention the um, WISE competency training model as mm. well, um, which I think has a few different layers um, and there's two main modules in that field that yeah. we do as well. Absolutely, so you'll see this um, in one of the pages in the National Safe Guidance Guidance, but this is our training model and it really talks about that group A at the bottom is um, Every single member of staff who works for the Y or volunteers at the Y should do um, a form of safeguarding training, which is our Feel Safe, Be Safe training. Um, and that's a two hour course. And even if you're thinking I'm a finance manager, I never come into contact with kids, um, it's absolutely essential that we have training um, which is available to you because you need to know what to do if, say, a kid comes across you at an event or you actually just find a kid actually out in the community. Um, you need to know what to do. So that's, that's the first level. And then, Group B is for those who come into contact with children and young people. So it could be OSH coordinator, an early years educator. Mm -hmm. It could be a sports coach or a lifeguard or even uh, one of our youth workers. So if you work directly with kids, um, this module actually, we expect you to do the feel safe, be safe, which everyone does. Then you'll also do the safe behaviors training as well. Um, and then if you move up, we go to group C, which is why managers. So if you manage people, we have some really good training which we're developing and will be available um, soon to support you as a manager in promoting safe practices and cultures within your centres or your um, sites. And then the final one is um, for available is Group D, which is available for Y executive leaders and boards. Um, and that's really specific around st um, strategic safeguarding and supports boards to understand their role, but also CEOs and execs to understand what they need to do too. Awesome, it's so great. It's tailored for each um, level as well, mm. which is really important. Um, and I guess a lot of the questions we sometimes get when it comes to training is responding to disclosures or how to identify signs and indicators of abuse as well. Um, and I've noticed there's some great templates and resources in the guidance on that as well. But is there anything you'd like to add to that? Anything on those two templates, I suppose? That you yeah, talk about? I think definitely if you get well, the one thing we really want you to do from my safeguarding is we've created this one stop shop. Um, which is the National Safeguarding Guidance and these videos are here to support it. Um, this is really the one-stop shop. If you need anything safeguarding, hopefully it should be in this document. Um, and definitely around all the questions I generally get is around disclosures. So we've got some really great advice on how to respond to disclosures. And they come with li little practical advice, like make sure you tell the child first today that actually you're proud of them and you believe them because lots of children and young people are told they're not gonna be believed. So it gives you some real practical tools. And um, then also what you'll see is the signs and indicators that you talked about, which is covered in the Feel Safe, Be Safe training is just some lists of what you might see in your practical um, scenarios at your wise that make you worried or concerned and make you think, mm, I might need to tell someone I'll do something. Yeah, and it's so good to have that information there because you can't remember it all mm. and they never come at a good time, disclosures or anything like that. So it's always good to know that the information is there if you need it as well. Yeah. Um, any other final tips and tricks for why people regarding uh, education training today? Yeah. Um, Look, make sure you, you can always learn in education and training in different ways. So we absolutely have some um, courses which are online and face to face, but go out there and do some reading or just learn from colleagues or mentor because education and learning comes in different ways. So the best way you learn is to um, use a multiple um, methods, I suppose. So yeah, in this space, you're never going to know everything and I'm never going to know anything. Um, so I'm continually learning and I hope that we create a culture where you really want to continue to learn to keep children safe. Thank you. Thanks, Laura.